Hi there. Some stories of overcoming incredible odds have effectively been embellished by people with a rich imagination and have been perceived as fact by people with keen interest. But what works great at the level of urban legend does not always work in an actual real life and death situation. And today, we will talk about tips that should not be followed under any circumstances. Even if something seems familiar to you, watch this video to the end and the finale will certainly surprise you. If you are bitten by a snake, suck out the poison. This is one of the most dangerous myths, experienced serpentologists warn. So, for example, the minimum viper canine length, depending on the species, is 0.4 inches. The poison is injected portion-wise under pressure. It is clear that using the mouth as a pump is an extremely ineffective solution. But even if an incision is made at the site of the bite, the poison extracted in this way through microtrauma in the oral cavity will immediately enter the bloodstream, which will only accelerate and increase intoxication. Since we cannot clearly predict the presence of such micro ranges, the best decision will be to stock up on professional remedies in advance, consult a doctor as soon as possible, and introduce an antidote. At this point, the best thing you can do, if possible, keep the wound below the level of the heart and move less so as not to provoke an increase in blood circulation. If the snow is clear, it can be an excellent substitute for water. This is true, but with one fundamental reservation. Regardless of the shape of the snowflakes, the ratio of volume of cold air to the volume of water in its composition is about 9 to 1. This means that in order to fill the stomach with 1 liter of water, you need to eat 10 liters of snow. And this is a proven way to quickly cool the body. That is why there is snow in the conditions of austerity of heat resources. Very dangerous and insidious advice. In order to not create additional problems, just wait a little and pre-melt it. Of course, it's better to do it in the car or in the sun, but not in your own hands. In the absence of water, your urine will save you. Such advice is often given by the authors of several schools, citing the example of the legendary Italian marathoner Mauro Prosperi. In 1994, at one of the stages of the 150-mile marathon, he fell into a sandstorm and got lost. When the water supply ran out, Morrow drank the urine he had collected on the first day. After the storm, at the limit of human capabilities, catching and eating bats, lizards, and non-toxic snakes. After nine days, he reached the saving oasis. The example of Prosperi is very convincing, but do not forget that Morrow is a professional all-arounder who trained 12 hours a day and ran 30 miles almost without water daily to get the body used to dehydration. So how good of an idea is it to drink your urine during an emergency? Here's what the BBC survivor answered in his interview. Of course not. It's waste containing potassium, calcium, and nitrogen compounds. And the more dehydrated you are, the more poisonous your urine becomes. A portion collected in the first days, more diluted and may help a little. But without experience, you will never know when your urine turns into poison and crushes your kidneys. That is why if you are an ordinary person and there is a choice, then the best way to effectively use the Golden Reserve is to moisten clothing or a bandana. Evaporation will lead to cooling and for some time will help maintain clarity of consciousness and avoid heat stroke. Despite our shared biology, there is still a huge difference between animals and humans. Many animals can eat plants that are edible to humans, but in the daily diet of animals, there can be dishes that are extremely dangerous for us. The simplest example is a squirrel whose body copes well not only with walnuts, but also with mushrooms toxic to humans. That is why whatever is on the menu for animals, for us, can be the strongest poison. Sip a brandy, vodka, or liquor in the absence of other available means will help you quickly warm up and restore the tone of your super cold body. This is another very common and extremely dangerous misconception, which has almost been around for 200 years. 
The myth was born thanks to the imagination of British artist Edward Landseer and his painting Alpine Misfits Bring the Feeling of the Lost Traveler, written in 1831. And although St. Bernard rescue dogs today are happy to pose for happy tourists with a barrel of brandy around their necks, none of them ever went on a mission with something like that. In fact, a short-term sensation of warmth is deceptive. Alcohol will expand blood vessels and capillaries on the surface of the skin, which will inevitably lead to intense global heat loss, which the body will have to fill up with the resources of the brain and internal organs. Moderate locomotor activity and breathing through the nose will help keep precious heat safe, allowing the lungs to generate more heat and warm the blood. Although hungry wolves, bears, and other predators from time to time wander into the villages bordering the forest, the likelihood of meeting them in their natural habitat is much higher. If you meet funny teddy bears in the forest, don't think about stopping to admire the cute picture, and even more so, don't stop to take a selfie for your memory. Otherwise, your next selfie will be with their mother, and that will be very gorgeous, but it will be your last. If the meeting with the owner of the forest took place and you were noticed, do not try to climb a tree, pretend to be dead, and even more, do not run away. Believe me, this is very bad advice. You will immediately turn into the victim. The bear can catch up to you in a matter of seconds as they can reach speeds of up to 37 miles per hour, and this will not be difficult for them. But making noise and ringing metal objects in your hand might not hurt. According to statistics, out of more than 150 species of sharks, only about 12 pose a real danger to humans. And according to experts, the fact that the number of cases of shark attacks is growing is not the fault of the predator, but of people invading their habitat. Some say that if you do meet an aggressive shark, take courage and crank it on the nose, eyes, or gills with all your might. Some even might advise pulling the fish ashore as a trophy. As you may have guessed, this is more bad advice. Indeed, incredible cases of salvation from an attacking shark with blows have taken place. But you are not Mike Tyson. And don't tempt fate. Such a scenario is likely to end fatally. In some cases, the situation can be temporarily saved by a fishing rod or harpoon, unless, of course, you were engaged in spearfishing at that time. But the first and main advice from professionals is to stay calm among sharks and do not attract attention. Try to get into a boat or slowly swim to the shore. Do not make noise and provoke a predator or go into the water with a bleeding wound. Swim alone in the evening or at night and swim in muddy water during the day. Remember, in the depths of the seas and oceans, a person is an uninvited guest and when they forget that, there is no telling what may happen next. Sunbathing and swimming in the cozy ocean coast, tourists often do not suspect any danger to be in the shallow waters only a few feet away. We are talking about the so-called rip current, water that is directed in the opposite way of the main wave flow. A rip current forms a rocky topography of the coast or coastal bottom turning the tide flow back into the ocean. Moreover, such corridors with a width of 50 to 160 feet can form on any part of the beach. Characteristic features of rip current. A section with formed water on the surface, changed color of water in the channel or a break in the structure of tidal waves. From a helicopter, it looks very clear and picturesque, but from the coast, in 80% of cases, it is not possible to make out a rip current, and warning signs are not always set. Once in such a corridor and not knowing how to behave, people are drowning literally 300 feet from the coast, and that's why. If the lagoon is narrow enough, you will be picked up like a sliver and carried into the ocean at a speed of 10 feet per second. Some have advice when facing these elements, and that is to row with all your might towards the shore. This is the absolute worst advice, and it has already cost the lives of many of careless tourists. Rowing against the tide is the same as trying to stop a truck. After a minute or two, you will lose your strength 
and go to the bottom at a distance of 300 to 400 feet from the shore. Knowing three simple rules, such as danger, can easily be reduced to zero. The first rule is to remain calm. The second rule is to save strength. The third rule is to swim not to the shore, but parallel to it. Given that the current is rarely more than 50 feet wide and rescue is very close, you can quickly get out of the critical zone. And that's all for today. Put like if you knew all these tips or write in the comments what we did not talk about. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.